Red Dead Redemption 2 is an action-adventure game set in the year 1899. The story follows the exploits of Arthur Morgan, an outlaw on the run with his gang from a pursuing government agency. The world that Arthur travels around is a vast open one full of events to find and secrets to uncover. In part 4, I cover the state of West Elizabeth, where I've managed to put together as many easter eggs, secrets, references and points of interest that I could find. And if you do enjoy this video and want to see the fifth and final part, then subscribe. That way you can stay up to date on all future videos I put up. And if you do want to see the other Red Dead videos, then I'll leave a link to those at the end of this one. Now it's time once again to journey into the world with Arthur Morgan and John Marston. Starting out in Big Valley, which is a mountainous region, one point of interest west of Owangila can be found amongst a group of trees. On a closer look, five of these trees appear to have faces carved into them and are facing each other in a circle. Who they are, or who carved them, still remain unanswered. On top of a rocky hill, close to the faces in trees are whale bones, suggesting a time millions of years ago, parts of this region was under sea, before the water levels receded. Far west of the map is a triangular obelisk. This stone monument stands on a pedestal with a metal plaque on one side. The words are a Latin motto, meaning the hour flees, don't be late, with the inscription's date. This can also be removed to find a treasure map hidden within. It's unknown whether the obelisk was erected in 1771, or if it is even older, but as this motto is used on sundials, it's likely that this obelisk was made to tell the time. There's a Native American burial site north of Owangila. In this clearing, there are coloured rocks on the ground forming a circle. And burial platforms nearby where this particular tribe laid their dead to rest. A disturbing discovery can be located just south of the obelisk, where some kind of ritual has taken place. The symbols on the ground and the rocks suggest a connection to voodooism, however as the name of this POI states, this site is pagan. It's possible the location was reused by a pagan for their own religious practices, and at the centre of it is a corpse stuck on a pike with a pagan mask that can be obtained. Near to Little Creek River are the skeletal remains of someone in a flying machine who had failed in the attempt and was killed in the crash. There's a cave network that you can enter west of the crashed machine. After crossing a bridge and passing a tunnel full of primitive cave art, then descending a ladder, will you find a cave hermit. Dressing like the devil, he'll try to scare the player away. There are nasty things and nasty people down here, and I don't mean you. Okay, I'm not the devil. But I want to be. I want to be. And that's even worse. I'm a nasty man. Go away. I don't want you here. Is that so bad? Wanting solitude? Wanting loneliness? Wanting anything but you? Go away. A more violent encounter with a hermit will happen if the player tries to approach the cottage at the far northwest of Big Valley. An old woman with her two dogs will warn them to leave. If they don't, she'll set the dogs on them while firing with her shotgun. Property. 
in various locations at the base of Mount Shan are four unusual painted images found on the rock surfaces. The artworks each reveal an alien figure, human worshippers, and a crescent moon. The mining tunnel entrance, called Beryl's Dream, runs underneath Mount Shan and can be entered after blowing away the rocks, blocking the way in. The corpse of a worker can be found at the end of the tunnels and appears to have been stabbed in the back. The wide bladed knife can be taken as well as the miner's hat that can be used to light the way instead of using a lantern. On the trail up to the top of Mount Shan are the skeletal remains of a giant with the skull of an ox nearby. This may be a reference to Paul Bunyan, who's a giant lumberjack and hero in American folklore that travels with his companion, Babe the Blue Ox. In the first video, I mention a frozen couple who are holding a mysterious map. It reveals a panoramic view of the Great Plains at night, with white lines pointing to other locations that's possibly meant to help orientate the players. There are similar white lines found on the rock wall halfway up Mount Shan, with a compass arrow pointing in the direction they'll need to look toward, along with the clue found on the note at Hanny's Bethel naming the mountain, all leads to the peak of Mount Shan. By going there sometime after midnight and looking out toward the Great Plains, will you be able to see a UFO hover for a brief moment before it goes back into space? Further along the mountain is this ancient stone sundial that has a circle of rocks at its base with different coloured arrows pointing to unknown locations. There are many theories but no real answers as to what it all means. Whether it's linked to the UFO appearance nearby or the arrows are meant to point to other mysteries, one thing is for certain, by following the map mission titled Landmarks of Riches Treasure, you can find under the rocks at one of the arrow points, six gold bars. Every town and state on the map has a borderline surrounding it that represents Arthur and John's bounty that will turn red if a crime is committed. One town in particular has a border in the shape of a strawberry that just so happens to be the town of Strawberry. There's an object north of the taxidermist home that might have been heading to that location, if not for its unfortunate accident. At the bottom of this gully is a broken crate that has a posing gorilla inside of it. On a cliff overlooking the valley is an abandoned campsite, and on a closer look, it appears that the tent's missing occupant was attacked by a bear. Whether they managed to escape with their injuries or the animal dragged them away is anyone's guess. At the start of the mission, an American pastoral scene, Arthur meets Micah at his camp to plan a robbery of a banking coach. But if the player returns to the camp later, some of Micah's documents can be recovered from the campfire. There's an article about the heist in Blackwater. Another is a wanted poster for Dutch Vanderlind. and there's an article about Micah with his father killing a farmer and his wife over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
Northwest of Wallace Station is a place called Watson's Cabin, where an old lady with a nasty attitude lives. About damn time. They said you'd be through two days ago. Just leave what you got in the cellar and be on your way. Are you dead in the head, boy? Put the loot down in the cellar with the rest of it. Is that clear enough for you, you dumb yak? By taking this opportunity to go into the cellar, you can grab a free weapon in the form of a semi-auto shotgun, and by doing this, the old lady will then turn hostile. What the hell you think you're doing? You put that back, or we will hunt you down. Let me give you some advice. Turn around, walk out of here, get far, far away. I said, get the hell out of my house. Now, you son of a bitch! Take that, you son of a bitch! That's it. I'm gonna find my sons. They'll skin you alive when I tell them what you done. Ain't so tough now, are you? Along Little Creek River, there's a random encounter that can happen where a drunk stranger will tell you his story if he's given a bottle of whiskey. He'll talk about his days as a young soldier at a fort for captured Native Americans. Whether you give him the drink or not, he'll eventually pass out. By then looting him, a Native American ring can be taken and sold on. A jump scare will happen if you enter a cabin called Vetter's Echo. When going inside, you'll be attacked by a grizzly bear, who's already broken in through the back door, and killed the owner. A tragic event can be discovered by the cliff overlooking the Appleseed logging camp, a random stranger will call to draw your attention toward what appears to be a wrecked wagon that has careened off the road and over a cliff killing the driver. A wedding certificate can be found in a lockbox that reveals the man is named James Payton, who recently got married to Mildred Barr. And a photo of the bride can be obtained from his body. A letter found at his home at Lenora View states that Peyton was going to pick up his new wife from her mother's. What makes this even more sad is Mildred's letter to him states that she is wondering where he is as her bags are packed by the front door and is waiting for him. On a cliff south of the Owangila Dam, there's another wagon that's about ready to go over the edge. What the player won't expect is that by going inside of it, Arthur or John will slip toward the back end before getting ejected and falling to their deaths. In the woods north of Little Creek River is a dead bear who had managed to kill someone just before dying of its own knife wound. The antler knife can even be taken. Moving into the region called the Great Plains, the church cemetery at the edge of Blackwater has a gravestone of particular interest, as one of them belongs to Greta Vanderlind, who's the mother of gang leader Dutch Vanderlind. Within the town of Blackwater, there are six sets of Aztec symbols that can each be recorded in the journal. These are a hidden message that reference the Undead Nightmare DLC. The symbols for the crocodile, wind, house, lizard and snake are all part of the Aztec calendar. The five images, when converted to their respective numbers, become one to five. These sets of numbers, when paired together using the Polybius square, responds to a letter that will form the message. When translated, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, 
which is a line seen on John Marston's grave, and Ayatotl is the name of the Aztec goddess that John encounters in the story. At the edge of the heavily forested region of tall trees, there are two circus wagons found abandoned just east of Manzanita Post. The red wagon that has been tipped over shows on the side of it a promotion for the circus performers who are conjoined twins. Their skeleton can be seen in the back of the wagon. Going inside the blue wagon, there's a fortune telling machine that will give the player a number of readings after the case is struck. And here your fortune from the magnificent Madame Irene. You will come to a crossroads, and before you make a decision, eat. You have mistaken clarity for veracity. A meal would serve you better than any sermon. Do not adopt to the pace of nature and lie dormant for a winter, then mate and murder before perishing without purpose. Next to the cliffs by Aurora Basin is a rare and perfectly intact Native American encampment that appears to have been recently abandoned. At the Manzanita Post, there's a dark secret to uncover involving the Norwegian community living here. Inside their home, there's a family photo hidden underneath the floorboards with a single word on the back that translates to unclean. A page from a journal written in Norwegian can be recovered from inside the chimney and mentions the guilt one carries for something yet unexplained. It's only when taking the scrap of newspaper from the body of a Norwegian settler do we find out what they did. This group are a small secluded religious community who objected to one of their own having a child with an outsider and saw them as unclean. They then fled from their native land to settle in America after stabbing to death the male outsider along with the woman and their two-year-old child. Deep inside the forest, is a pit that has several dead bodies. And next to the mass grave are several limbs that form the letter B. Along with the same letter seen on their shirts, they appear to be the missing Blackwater Athletes team that were mentioned in the newspapers. And as a bonus for the final entry, I've included some random events from the various gangs that you might encounter. These encounters range from gang intimidations and highway robberies to traps and ambushes, and you may discover some of the worst atrocities that people can do. Leo Driscoll's got this bridge, fellas. You best clear off. I'm just looking to pass, that's all. No, no. I don't think you get it. We got this bridge exclusive, like. <laughs> you idiots really want to die over a crossing? <laughs> Ooh, gotcha! Now, if you want to keep your head, you'll get down from that horse, okay? I ain't buying what he said. You get him to give it up. It's the stage company's spot, Mister. Help! Hey, shut up. Get out of here. Act like you never saw this. Hey, I didn't see that coming. This fella ain't no son of Lemoyne. What gave me away? My full set of teeth? Get out of here, boy. You're gonna wish you hadn't pressed me. I'm gonna take care of you. I am trying to run a respectable establishment here. Oh, please, no! 
That's fire. Mind if I warm my bones? <laughs> Y'all knew this was Murphy Hills. You should be careful where you're camping. Sick man. I was trying to help. Uh, bullshit you was. You move and I shit you. Ah, ah. Do I don't know. No. <laughs> it's here. Oh shit. Ma'am, you alright? <laughs> Oh, shit! Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. The fifth and final part will be released shortly in which I will cover the state of New Austin, so look out for that. If you haven't yet and you want to see more content like this, then subscribe. That way you can stay up to date on all future videos I put up. And as always, thanks to all of you who have subscribed and are helping to make this channel grow. So until the next video, bye everyone.